Hey there, everyone. This is Michael Dugo with EXP Realty, updating you with our latest Greater Toronto Area real estate news. According to this article over here, our home prices have actually increased over the past month for the first time in 10 months. And we're seeing this across the board, whether it's a luxury property, a condo, or even a flip. What's happening is the average price is a lot higher. So we're seeing a lot of listings that were up for sale last year. They were not selling after 90 to 120 days. They're being relisted now. Some of them are selling within days. So sellers don't realize that they can actually opt for a couple of pricing strategies. They can list it the traditional way and leave a little bit of room for negotiation, or they could list their property below market value, actually get competing offers and sell over asking. And there's a lot of listings selling 103% of asking price, 105% of asking price. So it's safe to say that whatever took place in quarter one of 2022, that's how the market is right now. If you have thoughts of selling, this is a great time to put your listing up for sale. Whether there's low inventory or there's high inventory, the market hasn't been this strong for sellers in a while. But there's there's an important disclaimer and that's that you will not get the price that you would expect to have gotten in quarter one of 2022. I'm sharing with you this chart here where we can see the average price in March 2023 versus March 2022. And you can see Brampton home prices are down the most by 21%. Then we have Markham down by 7%. Uh, Toronto East, so that's basically Scarborough down by 16.63%. However, the market now, I'm shooting this video at the end of April, it's definitely better than the average price back in March. But really what's stands out is the fact that homes are selling so quickly. So our days on market for a lot of properties is between five to 10 days. So this is great news for sellers, but what about for buyers? Well, the advantage for buyers is that now we actually have more inventory. So it was a very strange market. You can say the past six months because not only were buyers apprehensive to purchase, but, but also sellers were reluctant to list their property up for sale. So when those few buyers did decide to buy a property, they had very low inventory to choose from. And, and that's why we saw some months experiencing like the lowest number of sales we'd seen since 2008, believe it or not. Now we're seeing a more healthier market. Sellers are active. Buyers are active. We're also seeing more demand for pre-construction property. Pre-construction property is usually where sales drop the most during uncertain times. We saw this when the pandemic happened. The pre-construction market was basically gone because investors were not wanting to get into the market. They wanted to wait on the sidelines because of the volatility and understandably so. Now, fortunately, with uh, the interest rate stabilized, buyers have some security. They have an understanding of specifically what their financial needs would be for them to be able to afford a property. So my prediction moving forward is that the market will not stay this strong. I've been selling houses for about 10 years now, and we always see that uh, March and April command very high prices. But then what happens is in May and June, there's more listings. There aren't as many buyers. And then what happens is people get in vacation mode. So the average price is not as high. However, especially the past few years, we haven't seen the market being as cyclical as typically. Whereas usually we see like this peak in prices in the springtime and then another peak again, but not to the same extent in the fall when the market gets busy again. And for Perhaps the reason for this could be that buyers may purchase property in the springtime and then they may move in for the summertime so that the kids can get situated for the new school year to start in September. And in other news, this homeowner was charged over $17,000 and that's because he didn't submit the paperwork on time by the deadline, which was end of February, to declare whether or not his Toronto property was vacant. If you remember, what happens is Toronto has implemented something in which they are discouraging homeowners in Toronto to leave their property vacant or they're going to be taxed on it and homeowners had to actually submit that paperwork myself included. So if you happen to know a Toronto homeowner, please make sure that they have submitted the proper paperwork. Toronto has actually sent out many requests and over 35,000 homeowners have completely ignored them. Maybe they thought it was a scam. As always, you can count on me to keep you informed. And if you are considering buying or selling, call me, call me, call me as my customers get excellent service and real estate agents that are looking for a great brokerage. Definitely reach out to me to learn more about eXp Realty and the training and the services that we offer. You can connect with me on Instagram as well. Be sure to subscribe to see more future updates and I look forward to seeing you next time.